Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship again online with Central Baptist Church. Um, this is Saturday afternoon. I was just over in the church parking lot, um, and while we had the folks come in and plow the lot, uh, there's still a lot of snow covering. And with the single digit temperatures forecast for tomorrow, uh, we feared there would be icy and difficult to get from the parking lot into the church without some trouble. And so, uh, just like we did during the pandemic, um, we are offering this uh, worship time for Sunday morning online. Glad you're here. Hope you're warm and safe. If you have any needs or anything that we can help with, um, I hope you won't hesitate to let us know. Uh, we are glad for this time to gather together. Uh, this weekend, I was planning to talk about the Old Testament prophet Jonah. And so just a brief um, bit of commentary and, and thought uh, for us this morning uh, based on the sermon that um, I was preparing to preach. Uh, Jonah is a prophet in the Old Testament, a book in the Bible only four chapters long, um, and one that is a lot like our lives. It's filled with some inconsistencies, some uh, disturbing questions, um, some surprising reversals, um, and some almost ridiculous situations. Um, and like our lives that sometimes unfold in messy ways, uh, ways that we don't um, anticipate or plans that we've made that go awry um, or questions that we hold to and have, <clears throat> and have that perplex us. Um, uh, Jonah brings us into this conversation um, with his experience. Scholars have questioned about um, uh, exactly what kind of tell is this? Is, is this um, satire? Is it humor? Is it an epic tell, like, like with uh, Homer's Iliad? Um, is this a straightforward history, like with some of the other prophets? Um, is this um, a true story of the Jonah that's mentioned in 2 Kings 14.25, uh, the Jonah who is the son of Amati, who is the last prophet of the northern kingdom? Or is this taking the legacy of that historical figure and, and offering this very incredible story that many of us will remember from childhood? Um, Jonah, the person who hears the voice of God telling him to go um, to the city of Nineveh, which is a strange place in a strange and foreign land, and to offer the word of God, to preach the word of God to the Ninevites. Um, the only time in all of the Hebraic scriptures where a prophet is asked to speak to uh, someone outside of his own community, to offer uh, God's compelling word of, of a desire for relationship. Uh, to someone who is, um, and to a group who are non-Jews. Um, and after hearing this story, Jonah uh, rebels and uh, does not wish to follow uh, God's instruction and goes in the complete opposite direction uh, to, to Tarshish, um, a city that perhaps is on the other side of the Mediterranean. And so he hops a boat and tries to get as far away as he can from uh, both the place God has called him and the God who is calling him as he flees. And in the midst of fleeing, a storm comes up and, and as he's in this boat uh, with sailors. And the sailors who um, normally don't have a reputation of being very faithful and are normally uh, throughout history known as those with coarse language and coarse behavior uh, are found to be more faithful than Jonah himself and say, surely God is angry with us. Uh, is, or, do you have something to do with this? And, and Jonah volunteers to go overboard to save them from perishing because he has this sense that uh, he is fleeing from God and things aren't working out very well. Um, as Jonah is in the sea, in the open water, a large fish captures Jonah, swallows him, and he's in the belly of the fish for three days. Um, sounding a lot like, if you will, uh, the resurrection story of being in the, the depths of, of death itself, only to be resurrected. 
Um, and the story of Jonah in the boat is a lot like Jesus uh, crossing the Sea of Galilee. Uh, for Jonah was asleep in the boat before the storm came. Jonah arises from the storm and the storm is calm. And, and then Jonah descends into the depths only to be brought back into life. Um, and so there is that, that illusion uh, that perhaps the gospel writers uh, have, have thought of in telling the story of Jesus that is also with Jonah, the prophet that goes to not his own people in order to offer God's word. Um, but there's Jonah now um, in the belly of the well, recognizing that uh, perhaps it's time for a reevaluation of his life's um, decisions and behaviors and goals, um, and, uh, and then is uh, regurgitated up back onto dry land when the word of God comes to him a second time, uh, again with the same message to go to the city of Nineveh, which this time he does um, with a very short and not very uplifting sermon, which basically uh, says the city needs to repent or it will be destroyed by my God. And the most surprising of all things happen. Uh, the people who are, um, and in terms of the the understanding of, of, of being outside of God's providence and God's instruction and God's commandments and God's community, uh, these people who are on the far other side that were judged as unholy and unrighteous and worthy of condemnation uh, immediately change their ways from the youngest to the oldest, even including the animals they put on sackcloth and they say, yes, we wish to have an authentic relationship with this God only to lead Jon Jonah to um, a place of um, disgust. And he pouts that his uh, sermon was successful among these uh, people that did not deserve to hear it. And, um, and takes comfort under this plant that offers him shade in the, uh, the, the heat of the sun, uh, only to have that plant disappear overnight. And now Jonah is uh, disgusted. Uh, not only was he having to preach the word of God to the people he didn't wish to offer it, um, but even the little bit of comfort that he was seeking is gone from him. And finally, in the response of God to Jonah, uh, there is this confrontation of priorities. Um, God asking, am, not, am I not uh, able to have mercy upon whom I wish to have mercy? Am I not able to love those whom I wish to love? Um, and that's the book that offers us these incredible and perplexing questions. Uh, how is it that those people who uh, we might judge as being unworthy are perhaps closer to God than we might be? Or even more directly, how is it that those people who claim a special relationship with God often are far away from what God perhaps would like for them to do? How is it that the sovereign God that has command over the storms of the sky and the beast of the sea, um, even to help direct the growth of plants that come and go in season, is not able to control the disobedient heart of one of God's own favorite, favorite servants, um, that while God has great power. God has allowed this freedom for even those who claim a, an authentic relationship with God to rebel and to not always do what perhaps God would like. Um, how is it that this group of people in Nineveh who would be for their behavior and for their nationality, for their identity, for everything about them, would be condemned throughout so many pages of Hebraic thought to find on these pages a permission to be included, a welcome to be God's own people, um, to skip a lot of steps on what they should do 
to prove themselves righteous and simply to accept the graciousness of God that is offered to them. You would think there's a lot of parables, um, uh, parallels to today's time about faithfulness and about God's incredible, gracious welcome. Um, during Bible study this week, um, one of my friends said, "You know, Jonah appears in the God, in the in the in the Old Testament between uh, Amos and Micah, and Amos and Micah use that kind of hell and brimstone, fire and brimstone, uh, fiery speak that um, Old Testament prophets are known for the the type, as my friend described it, uh, that could." Um, Preach the, the pain off your backside. But Jonah comes in a different way to us uh, with this kind of fantasyful tale of God's incredible mercy, um, of, of God's freedom to do as God wishes, as God's desire to claim and love those whom God uniquely wishes to love and claim that the faithful do not have possession of God's mercy, but God is able to be merciful with whomever God wishes. Perhaps a place that I have found hope in Jonah is this in this very strange chapter two. Strange in setting, and perhaps even more um, unique in response. For in chapter 2, Jonah is in the belly of the beast. And uh, the heading that's in the Bible I'm looking at now uh, offers a psalm of thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, just pause on that for a moment. In the belly of a beast, swallowed by a great fish, surrounded by stomach acid, and, and wondering what next stage of digestion you might be encountering, um, oxygen deprived, uh, the stench, uh, the darkness, the isolation, the peril of pending death at your, at your fingertips and at every part of your being. Um, this is what we learn, Jonah prayed to the Lord, and I'll read to you a, a large portion of chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and the Lord answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and God heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you. And I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will vow deliverance belongs to the Lord. Talk about rock bottom. <laughs> you can hardly imagine a more distressing situation. To offer the only prayer that is ever legitimate, and that is, Lord, have mercy upon me, and that if I am to be delivered, it will only come at your hands.
join me for prayer. Lord, we are so grateful for the gift of your mercy that extends far beyond our human limits. And in this cruel world and on this cold day, we ask that we may be warmed by your love to receive it, to know it, and to share it. In Christ's name, amen.